I am sure sports. You know me there, yeah. I'm coach to coach representing. I mean, I said this is right, just representing for Omar. You don't know, come get the sports over here from near and far. Oh, boy, 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 boy. Me say, I am sure sports, one thing me sure about When me say sure, that me, me not doubt Come get your sports, get it over here Come subscribe, repost and share I am sure sports, one thing me sure about When me say sure, that me, me not doubt Come get your sports, get it over here Come subscribe, repost and share, yeah, share. If me not sure, that me, me not say it No who score, that, that me, me, me not say it Never know no game play, that, that me, me, me not say it If me never seen a game, me not know who play For your sports news, then come over your son For your soccer news, then come over your son If you don't love sports, still come over your so, for the day, don't you want to love over your yes, so, so, when it comes on to behavior concerning football, Jamaica is, is decent. I am sure that if we can get all of these things done, set in place by the end of April, it gives us enough time before the World Cup campaign. Not afraid of no Brazil, no Argentina with these crapper players. We are good enough. Remember to like, subscribe, 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 share. Listen, comment, let me know what your thoughts are. Tricknick Jerk Marinade gives your meats and vegetables authentic Jamaican jerk flavor. The spices are directly from Jamaica. Spices like jerk seasoning, allspice, scotch bonnet pepper, fresh scallions, thyme, ginger, and garlic. The key ingredients to a great jerk marinade. 0% sugar and low in sodium. You want to try it? Made up of 18 Jamaican herbs and spices. Add delicious, bold flavor to your next grilling experience. Flavoring sauce, a marinade, basting, condiment, or topping. Trick Nick Jerk Barbecue Sauce. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice. And give Trinidad four in it. Welcome to I Am Show Sports. He's adding himself. Can't hey. wait. So, All right. I, I... No, 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 no. Just, just come here for the full time beating. Yeah, you see, I don't, I don't want, I, I just don't want you to feel I'm hiding from you. I'm braver than that. So I'm oh, eager to see you today. We, we were naming this stream. Cataract, Bosi, Andre, Heidi. When I see Andre is in full white, as per the Geneva Convention, crying peace. If I cry Cree, Cataract is in full black because I came and the killing. And if it's killing, I'm willing. So that's why I'm in full black people. I'm in a killing mood. Cross, angry, miserable. Good morning to all. 48, we're loaded, loading procedure. Remember to like the video. Remember to share. And if you're new to this channel, subscribe. This is where you have the same people talking. And the mad people in there. The mad people gang. Um... We come to talk all things football, all <clears> things <throat> to the reggae boys and the soccer warriors today. Um, and we're talking CONCACAF Gold Cup. The, we are, I'm live here in St. Louis, Missouri, um, where last night the reggae boys played a domino match pretty much trying to get to six love, but it ended 4-1 with the reggae boys criminally missing uh, a whole heap of chance. And uh, Trinidad looking like the beating stick that they are. In the second game of the night, so Jamaica was briefly on top of the table, uh, but at the end of the night, 
the United States who were clinical uh, demolished St. Kitts. Was it 7-0? I think I left with 10 minutes to go. So did it end 7-0? Andre? Andre seems to be stuck. Six. Six. I think that is six. So, so, no, I'm not stuck. No, I'm, yeah, you, you six, were. Zero. I'm saying when I left the stadium with about 10 minutes to go to beat the, um, the rush, it was 7-0 to the United States. I don't know if they added any in the final minutes of the game or oh, it was six, six nil. You, you might have, you might have had, um, yeah. <laughs> no, 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 I think that they, they, What was they, your condition when you left? No, I think there might've been a goal or something that we were querying. I don't know, but it, 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 it was bad. Um, as I said to the head of the Sam's army ultras, Duppy know who for frighten. Duppy know who for frighten. We will see you in the finals and we will remember what you did to our Caribbean brothers. Why them step on them? It wasn't a pretty sight. St. Kitts were not in the races. I think within uh, they managed to hold on for about 10 minutes before the flood. I'll hold for a quick minute, okay? Yeah, man. Uh, I'll, I'll keep it going. So let me say this I'm going to address um all matters i'm not sure I, I see someone coming on kendall but uh i'm not familiar so andre will have to uh verify um kendall um so andre will do that but i'm gonna speak to andre hey, yes i see someone Name Kendall. Yeah, 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 yeah. Is he? Yes, so, yes. He's please. um, he's from Trinidad. He's been on our show before, and I yeah. wanted him to come in and share his opinion a little bit about the game last night. Please, so, please. So, we we speak standard English here. You want him to come to the funeral, <laughs> and I don't see him in a jacket. <laughs> okay. So is he giving the eulogy? <laughs> so, Welcome. So, so Adam, I uh, give me a minute here, okay? <laughs> yes, I'll give you a minute. Um, oh, he's dressed for the occasion. He's got his buttoned-up shirt. Um, so I'm going to take a minute, and then I'm going to address something, and then I'm going to allow Kendall to come in and give the Trinidadian perspective. So firstly, I'm going to be beating some people. Um, I tried to get some light. I wonder if I could get the light switch turned on. Um, fresh God. You are going to feel my wrath today, fresh God. Yes, you who said cataract love, chatter off mouth. Cataract no respect Trinidad. Cataract, oh, you, you know, the games were close with Trinidad. And cataract too hype. All who said cataract too hype, my hype. I'm a bossy. They call me tame. But, and you guys who were talking of Trinidad, I want to hear when I talk today. We remember the firm warrior them back cataract when cataract said them are gonna get seven. I'm gonna remember the shaky one them. Fresh God. Fresh God. Yo, fresh God with your wrench. You have to go back in a mechanic school. Right. When you say man, I, uh that's a little internal HR housekeeping. Kendall, welcome to the program this morning. Uh Thank you, Mr. Cataract. Thank you for having me on. Appreciate you. I know I can feel your energy, so it's all good. Do you need a translator? <laughs> Do I need to translate all of that to you? I can feel your energy, my brother. It's all good. Okay, so go ahead. Um, tell us about the shellacking um, that happened last night from your perspective as a, as a Trinidadian fan. Uh, what we were chanting in the stadium last night is carnival done. Dance all can stop. You had a bacchanal against St. Kitts, beating them 3 0. But this is the big boys thing. So share your perspective on the game last night and let's get down to brass tacks. Um you know, I would I would honestly say that uh I'm not too surprised at the result, uh, whether it would have been four, five, or one. 
um, when we look squad for squad, personnel for personnel, um, going into the game, I, I understood the strengths of the Jamaican team comparative to the Trinidad team. And I felt that Jamaican team would certainly be the, have the advantage. Some things that were, were clearly evident in the way that um, Jamaica approached the game um, with, a, with a level of confidence, with a level of um, maturity in their, in their play and their approach. And one of the significant difference I thought was just the physical side of the game. I mean, it, it, at times it looked like men versus boys, to be honest with you. On the physical side of the game, so um, I know. I, well, I love to interrupt. Not surprising so, to me. So I love to interrupt. I'm just a point of order. It was men versus babies, men versus babies, not men versus boys. That's not what it looked like. But proceed. Well, fair, fair enough. Again, perspective. Um, you know, and, and in these kinds of games, when after 30 minutes you go down three goals, uh, it, it all you, at that point in time you're just looking to stop the bleeding. So um, I thought the second half was a little bit better from from Trinidad's perspective, uh, but Jamaica did have again many many more opportunities to to, to score more than they scored. Um, they created good opportunities, good chances. Um, there are times when Trinidad looked a little disheveled and incohesive in, in some of the things they were trying to do. I, I don't want to get into personnel and who should have played and where they should have played and all of that stuff. That's just on the surface. Um, one team demonstrated that they were clearly better than the other team. So, <clears throat> um, thank you for those words. Um, we, we are going to break down football. The first few minutes is just to allow me to hype and enjoy myself. And I see some people backpedaling, but I remember all of you. So let me start at what we saw yesterday. And let me begin with the record that was set broken and set by Dujon Richards, O.C. Whisper. I think he's 17 years old, became the youngest goal scorer in the history of the Gold Cup. Bruh, 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 to Whisper. Those are just blanks. Don't get scared. Um, and the coach has been justified if people who remember when I was putting together my squad um, for who should be in the 23-man squad, I said Whisper must be there um, based on merit and certainly to learn. But he came on with 10 minutes to go and was devastating in the 10 minutes. I'm, I'm, some of what I'm saying, I'm going to repeat. the. Me not even think Whisper no way, Mado. So all Whisper confused himself and the defense was a confused. And from the moment he touched the field and picked up the first ball, you felt it in the bones that this young man, who is destined for greatness, if he works hard and sticks to it, he is the future of Jamaican football. Be very afraid, Trinidad. Be very afraid. Um, a wonderful strike confident that's not normally seen in a teenager um as he let rip and the ball took a wicked deflection but that's if you don't shoot you can't kill so i have to big him up um that's where i want to start today i think i want to uh andre is not here because i told andre that there's going to be one father who is crying and one father celebrating richie royal Big up your damn self. You 
for all that you've done for your son, uh, many com congratulations are due to you, you know? Um, so that's the big starting point. The other starting point I would want to, because I'm not the coach, I can single out players. And we're, we're, I'm going to try and do some player ratings. I only have about an hour and a little bit before I have to try to. Um, I want to single out Damari Gray. Two goals on his second game for the Reggae Boys. Two goals, one assist. Uh, he had an assist in his first game. Looking like a Premier League player. So some of them man them. The ultra them. And I thought the man them with it, I said Trinidad, I forget respect. The real man them was stuck by cataract. We need to get a name for Damari Gray. You can't just come in a reggae boy as a name Damari. It, it don't work like that. You understand? I'll be here the coach I said Didi. No, 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 coach. No, no, no. His name can't be Didi. No, no, no. Um he put on a clinical display of attacking football. But what is frightening, and I think St. Kitts will feel the brunt of it, is that the chemistry between the front three have not clicked yet. And so for a lot of times, Damari was making a lot of runs off the ball. He was making, he did a lot of off the ball movement and, and managed to isolate himself, but the play didn't find him. And... I look forward to when the front three are clicking. Kateri, Kateri, could I intervene for a moment? Oh, uh, well, ab ab absolutely. I mean, I would... I mean because you, you, I, I know you, you probably think it's really a, a funeral. You have an eulogy kind of speak, and we have Kendall on, and we'd like to hear from his thoughts about the game. You, but oh, Kendall spoke already. Kendall, Kendall yeah, spoke. But, I, but what I do, what I, what I would like for you, I mean, you won the game, and congratulations, right? Congratulations, right? Um, um, and and much respect to, to the Jamaican national team, to you and my husband, everybody else, right? Um, but you know, let's 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 keep it in context. Right? Let's not. Oh, yes, we, yes, we, 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 it's just a group stage. Of the, it's just a group stage of the Gold Cup, and I, I've always said that Jamaica is heading in the right direction. And I think um, all of you, everybody on YouTube that has come out and. Um, and and held Jamaican football uh, accountable, right? Must take credit for this moment because Jamaica football is heading in the right direction. Um, and, and Jamaica may be the only team in the region at the moment whose football is heading in the right direction. But I know that Kendall has to go. He's not going to be on forever. So we, we're going to get back to this. I just want to, to, to hear his thoughts on a couple of things. But you, you, are, you are as late as the Trinidad defenders. <laughs> Kendall has shared his perspective. No, but uh, I, have, a, I have a particular... cogent way. But if you have questions for your countryman, <laughs> I will allow you. After I say this, I told you that there'll be one father crying <laughs> and your son was given. I pointed him out. <laughs> I, Cataract, held the Marai Greer. Uh, Look for Fatu Cookie. I <laughs> deal with him away. You know that. Hey, so, it's all it's all part of the process. You, you see the high score he got on sofa score against St. Kitts? Uh, Notice no one. Nice you. <laughs> it's all part of the process, Cataract. You did not congratulate Richie Royal, who when we were on the last time before mm -hmm. our pregame. I told you that Richie would be the father feeling good and you would be the father having to G up your youth. Well, but Kendall, well, I allow you to I'm, ask yourself to Kendall. I'm sure, I'm, sure, I'm, sure Richie, I'm sure Richie will show up within the next hour and we get a chance to congratulate him. Um, Kendall, you, you watched the game last night and um, I want to get your thoughts. You, you know, you've coached for a long time and, and, um, and I think what I observed last night um, when you compare the first game to the second game, that there was a complete change of formation in the game. Um, in, in this game compared to the other game. As, as someone, of course, and we understand, we preface this by saying that we understand we don't have all of the information, but we have as much information as we could possibly have. We know the Jamaican roster. We know how the 
how they started. We know who they have in their roster. What do you think? What do, what what happens? What makes um, what causes such a drastic change in your mind um, generally um, for someone who's coach coach for a long time? Well, th there could be a couple of uh, variables, right? Um, in a tournament style uh, situation, it's not uncommon to see roster changes or formation changes depending on the opponent. Opponents are very different. So when you think about playing St. Kitts and Nevis and you, you do a scouting and you look at that, that squad and you're going to uh, put, put out a squad and a formation to play a certain type of way. Um, so if you think about starting where the tournament, Jamaica and the U.S. has already tied. So now that next game against St. Kitts, you want to have a more attacking oriented because you're going to need to score goals. And one, you're going to need points, but two, you're going to need to score goals. If you're thinking on paper, your next two opponents are going to be tougher opponents than the first. Um, but when we look at changes, do they are they significant in a way that not just meets the opponent? But what are, what are the messages in there when you change formation, right? Um, and that's the thing that you got to kind of figure out. So what's the objective in coming into a game with Jamaica? Are we looking to beat Jamaica? Are we looking to, to, to steal a point so that we're, you know, because we know we have another big opponent after that. Um, so what would be the approach and the result we're looking for in the game could impact how you decide you want to, to, to make those changes and, uh, and formation. But personnel is important. And when I look at how you're going to start a game against a stronger opponent than the one you played previously, and then based on their personnel, I think not having... Uh, some of your more experienced players on the pitch to start the game could have been at a detriment. So a Molino, a Joven Jones, starting the game for you could be making a difference in the personnel. And obviously with them on the pitch, maybe you're playing a different way. But I think the experience of those players could have been more helpful in starting out against a team like Jamaica based on the Jamaicans' personnel that they have. So, um, and that make, that, make, um, that make perfect sense. I think, um, um, again, we won't always know everything that the coach is thinking about and, 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 and we don't know the objective for the game, where they try to win the game, tie the game, or they certainly didn't try to lose the game, right. um, but, but he lost the game. Um, you know, you, you watch at football, and we all in football, so I think we all um, is is entitled to have an opinion, and, and whether people disagree with it or not is it's it's fine because we have people with with less football training in terms of football education who has opinions every day long on on social media, and, and they feel like they're entitled to that. Um, the, the the three the first three goals were scored by three mistakes, three. Um, we would say in, in individual um, mistakes that led to goals. Um, you know, I'm, football... I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I have to interrupt this. Um, but if you really, to... if you're really I... sorry, you wouldn't interrupt. No, I just want to. Is, is this the nine night? If so, can I have some fish and bread and rum, <laughs> or is this the funeral, the burial? I just want to know because one thing that I do know is that post mortem has never brought back the dead. So let me let me let me say this. We're not gonna sit here and chat, and you say some man that were sitting on the bench would have been come on and make a difference. <clears throat> no, 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 sorry, Bob. Any um, eleven for Trinidad hmm. would have been the same treatment. Let me tell you why. Uh -huh. Every time Demara Gray got the ball. We, had to, we started calling him, mash them up. Him just mash them up, dismiss, make, make them look like... 
I don't know, like pins at a bowling alley. So I am not going to sit here and allow my two Trinidadian CARICOM brethren to try to paint a picture that there was anything less than a full clip of torture that was executed last night. The United States was looking for Damari Gray because he was basically waterboarding you guys. Period. Done. Abstract. I don't, I don't. I don't think it. I don't think it, it was, was quite. I don't think it was quite like that. I think Jamaica was quite like that. Jamaica were better. Jamaica were better, and Jamaica won the game. I don't no, think it no, was quite no, like no, no, that. no, 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 sir. No, 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 no. Oh no, you don't. Oh no, you don't. Okay. Oh, no, you don't. So let, that would, that would suggest that the one hundred and fourth ranked team in the world mm -hmm. is like on a level with the 70-something ranked team in the world. You looked like what you are, 104th ranked team in the world, and you need to get yourself sorted out, sir. You, you, and I do believe, let me just say this, I do believe if you don't take an honest account that in Santa Clara, the United States, chasing goal difference to top the group are going to annihilate Trinidad. So you guys need to regroup, have an honest conversation with yourself. Don't pretend that you were ever at the races with Jamaica. You created one chance all game and put away that one chance. So that's 100%. And, so that's 100%. Yes. <laughs> and the, the, and so, Katra, the, hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. After that, that Jamaica missed three open goals with, with your keeper on the beach. Hold on. Hold enjoying on. that 19 but, rum so and doubles. Zero percent. You're, 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 you're not allowing us to explain ourselves, right? No, no I'm, I'm going to finish. I'm going to finish. No, no, no. You're not allowing us to explain ourselves because you have people in the Expl comment Expl section. Expl hold on. People in the comment section um, um, being, uh, I guess, is misunderstand us. Trinidad performance last night was not up to standard. That's a given. No, 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 no Trinidad's no. performance last night was up to your standard. That is as good as you are. Your team no good. Period. Done. <laughs> you had been disillusioned. You had been given this illusion by beating the 139th ranked team, St. Kitts and Nevis. And you came to Jamaica, played a local based team with some youngers from England, six, 17 year old Delano Splat, 19 year old Tyler Roberts, and got all hyped. Don't forget. No, no, no. no. Who, nobody, no please, nobody sir. was. No. You Nobody was ever high. You're icy dicey. Let's, Katrak, let's have a conversation about the football. I understand that I understand that you are you are happy and you are right to enjoy. You are, you are right to enjoy. I don't know, Kendall, night, but I was speaking about the football when you interrupted me to allow Sir Kendall. Yes. And I, I had to interrupt. But, but you're no longer you. speaking about the football. <laughs> we are speaking longer. about what are we speaking about? We, we were trying to talk about oh, football. I'm, we were trying, I'm sorry. We were, I'm sorry. We were playing dominoes. We were playing dominoes <laughs> at the football stadium because you were about to get six. Okay, let's continue the football conversation. So, right. So right. the football so what, that I was saying, so what, I was saying mm -hmm. Jamaica missed three open goal sitters that can't be explained. When your goalkeeper was busy drinking his VAT-19 rum with Angostura in it, and Liam Bailey miss it up. Shamar Nicholson miss it us. I saw Mikhail Antonio end up in the back of the net without the ball. So the, the result 4-1 flatters to deceive you. This was not a close game. This was not a competitive match. This was not, uh, earlier Kendall said it was men against boys, but I had to correct him. It was men against boys. Babies, you needed a nipple buckle and a soda. It was painful. So when you started, I, I was on to Demare Gray, speaking about football, and saying that Demare Gray has come into CONCACAF and demonstrated that he is an EPL level elite player. I have to congratulate him because some other players had come in and people had this thing, the xenophobic Jamaican, not because a man played in the Premier League, that meaning good. Actually, it does. 
And what Damara Gray showed last night, I don't know some, I don't know the man them saw it, was that Stunner, when I respect nobody, um, his touches, the way he controlled the ball, his movement off the ball, his turn of pace is at another level. And as he gets more integrated in the reggae boy attack, as that front tree of Antonio, Bailey, and Gray begin to understand each other, it's a frightening prospect, wouldn't you say? <laughs> okay, so we gotta have some rules in these conversations, though, Katara. Because if you, the Mary Gray did what he does in the Premier League every weekend, right? Just that's not lost on anybody. Um, Jamaica does have a good squad, and Jamaica. No, you are not good. You have choice of adjectives. It's a good Jamaica has an exciting, excellent. Top of the line, those are adjectives, not good. Good. <laughs> so, so, okay, so you want to talk for you and you want to talk for me. Then, please, please. You, you, you want to talk for me and you want to talk for you. You want to say something, Kendall? Yeah, I, I do because, you know, Andrew, you made a point as you started talking about um, Jamaica being headed in the right direction. Okay, and I know you and I have had some conversations about that. Um, it's not, and that's a big part of it, right? So you talked about those who held Jamaica football accountable. So those are the things that, that, are, that are important in the conversation to now look and see what they have been able to put on the field as a product in terms of player personnel, coaching staff, and all the other pieces that they've put in order to regroup. Remember, Four years ago, you're not talking about the Jamaica squad the way you are talking about it now. So there's some work that has been done during that period that, for me, um, Trinidad and Tobago has to do. They haven't done, and, and they have to do. For, for lots of various and sundry reasons, it has to be done in order to get the squad to a place where Jamaica has been able to get their squad. We know Gray and we know Antonio. We know th th those guys are top level international players. We, we recognize that. Um, so in, in, in truthfulness, there's some work that has been done in Jamaica and their football, their vision and where they're headed. That is still, for me, lacking looking at what Trinidad and Tobago has done. It's not a question about being 104, beating 139, because it's football we're playing, right? But it is what does your program look like in terms of its vision, how it's being built, how it's put together towards um, getting to a certain space, whether it's World Cup 2026 and, and or just getting through Gold Cup 2023. I, There's I a lot of things that have to come into play there. I, that, um, a uh, different for Jamaica than it is for Trinidad. And, and, and this is the point that um, I wish Qatar could allow me to make. I've always been complimentary of Jamaica's progress. The reason why I'm on this platform is because I've watched for a long time and I see the effect it was happening and the happening and the attempt was is to try to get the, the Trinidad and Tobago public involved. We we have a, a, a we are different to Jamaicans, right? Um, we would stay in the background. And we would watch, and then we would criticize. And the the human capital that is required, okay, the investment that is required, just like Manage Man and all the other YouTubers have invested um, to help bring the Jamaican football to where it is today, that they could put together a squad like this. That's what needs to happen in Trinidad. We need to have the same ambition that Cataract has, that management have, that the Federation is now embracing to have a squad that could be competitive in the region. So Jamaica is headed in that direction. They put a very good team out last night and they get a result that they deserve. And there's no question to that. But when we look at the performance, that doesn't mean that um, we can't critique the performance, right? I wanted to talk about the football Cataract. Do you want to talk about the football? 
when you interrupted me, I was speaking <laughs> about the football. And I allowed some people to come on. Let me let me just say this. Mm. Cataract is cataract. <laughs> First of all, Andre made a lot of noise. I did not see him in the stadium. I did not make any noise. I did not, what noise Prior did I make? I did not make any noise. Yes, you did, Andre. No, I did when not. When you drew against Jamaica, and when you won 1-0, one you had your icy dicey. No, 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 no. Now, no. hold on. I, I called you out for, for predicting 7-0. I called you out for that. You predicted 7-0, and it didn't turn out that way. So I called you out for that. And that's not... Um, look, I know, I know where Trinidad and Tobago football is. And okay. that's, why, that's why I'm here. I know where it is. Um, I've tried to get the GenSec on. You guys have been succe successful in getting Jamaica's GenSec on several times. I try to get the GenSec on to talk about the plans for Trinidad and Tobago football. I try to get the, the coach on so that the public would know what to expect in Trinidad and Tobago. And that just isn't happening because I think there's not an understanding that football belongs to the people of Trinidad and Tobago, just like football belongs to the people of Jamaica. And we need to be accountable. We need to be accountable to the people. We have to let them know what our plans are so they can support the football. I'll give you an example. L let me ask you a question. When the deal with Adidas was announced, right? How long did it take before they said the shirts were sold out? Cataract. What was it? Twenty-four I am, hours. I am not discussing coaching license. I'm not discussing no. Gen Sex. I'm discussing what I witnessed in St. Louis, Missouri, last night, which was a side getting beaten like a slave. And I would like you to discuss that. You but said, what, you were, "How would you like me to contribute you're to that?" Your administration and how would you? But that's our problem. How about how about your defenders, your left wing back? give accountability about why Damari Gray just drove past him up and down. Why does your goalkeeper give accountability? I warned you that he was going to be spending a lot of time taking the ball out the back of the net. That's the game I want to talk about. Okay, in regards to the wing back, so in, that, in regards to the outside back... And I would, I'd like to hear you and Kendall, so I'm going to pause again. Right, so in regards to the outside back, um, Antonio... Is bigger, he's stronger, he's faster. Bigger, stronger, faster. And faster. Okay. So, so that explains his ability to get to run behind, past the defender. Just like he does every weekend in the English League with most teams. Fair enough? So... Here we go. So that's what you say. Kendall, what 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 say you about well, I, I, I made my point in my opening. No, in... I'm asking the defense. I know you did. Um men against boys. Uh when you look at player for player personnel matchup, it that's just what you had. Okay. For example, when we look at uh that Aubrey, Aubrey for Trinidad and Tobago, who who was a handful at times for you guys, okay. But but he's a boy against men. He's only able to do but so much, right? And that's the difference in where I think a lot of the game happened. The individual personnel that you have on the field matched up against the individual personnel that Trinidad and Tobago has matched up on the field. It's 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 me it's me and Usain Bolt trying to run a hundred meters. I could think I'm fast, but come on, man, you know. The, so the that, individual, the individual do but it's more, Jamaica but it's more than them. those individual things that impact what happens when a team gets on the field. There's more to it than just having people, having personnel with ability. It takes more than that. Why I mentioned in terms of changing the lineup and not having two of your more seasoned, mature, experienced players in your starting lineup there may be some things that they bring to the table at the start of the game that helps the Trinidad and Tobago squad be a little bit more cohesive and, and, and other things than, than they were able to do in, in the first half. So, yeah. Okay. And, and so let me explain to, to the people in the chat. When Andre came on and tried to have a discourse that 
the result that we saw was because the coach didn't pick some players and some players didn't start. That upset me. No, no, no. I, I never because said that. Made a suggestion as if. No, 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 no. I never said that. Hold on. Who came on in the game and didn't the, the flow of the game did not change? I heard some people criticizing the second half. It's not that we Jamaica dropped in standard in the second half. It is just that we did not finish the clear cut openings that we had. There was not one player on the Jamaican team, not one who played badly. There was not one player who played average. Every player played up to their standard and some played above their standard. And if you allow me to go on, I would also like to single out Kevon Lambert, who people know that I've been critical of before. He has in the last two games demonstrated a growth and maturity in understanding the CDM role. I have to single out Joel Latibader, who is a center back, who played right back, who is playing in an unfamiliar CDM sort of role. And he has adapted over the games against United States and Trinidad So here's the thing. I cannot, looking at the game, could not point to one weakness in Jamaica. I could not point to one time when Trinidad looked like making us in trouble. I mean, we were just singing and just, there was nothing. But on the individual Jamaican side, I know you're saying that we have individually better players. But there have been many times when individually better players don't come together as a team. What happened last night, and it began in Chicago, is that, and big up the man them, because everybody can come and watch stadium, come watch. When you're in the stadium and you see the man them a hug on the bench, you see players that congratulate each other, you see them shaking hands when they're coming off. This was a different kind of team chemistry demonstrated last night than what Jamaica was accustomed to. A lot of the people in the chat over the past week before had a lot to say when we lost to Qatar and lost to Jordan. They had a lot of criticisms of Coach Halgrimson. People were asking about his first win. Coach Halgrimson answered them in the press conference and he's correct. He has never lost a competitive game for Jamaica at the helm. And I think that's important because friendly games are just that. They are meant to try out tactics, sharpen skills, look at players, and get them ready for the competitive game. So yes, Gina Tapp, I don't speak for Jamaica. I speak for the Jamaican fans who were in the stadium. Right, that's right, who I speak if we, for. If we, let's, let's do this. If we're going to have a conversation about the game, there were two teams in the game, Jamaica versus Trinidad and Tobago. Jamaica won the game four to one. It means Jamaica scored four goals, Trinidad scored one goal. So we can't say that there was not a moment where Trinidad troubled Jamaica because Trinidad did breach Jamaica and score a goal. Right? Yes, that was you, yes, you, yes. You. And, and right. I did say that, that you created one clear cut chance right. and you so, put away so, the um, so it, but but we've got to we've got to train that football has to improve and we need we that needs to be part of the conversation as well. That's that's the purpose. Jam Jamaica is on the move. Jamaica is on the move, and that's great. And we want we want to be part of that conversation, right? We want to be more competitive. I want us to be more competitive. So while we're talking about the game, the game is affected by a lot of things that isn't right with the football in Trinidad and Tobago. And that's what Kendall and I was alluding to earlier. So the point I was trying to make about the Adidas deal, I believe you sold out, um, Adidas sold out the Jamaican shirts in 24 hours or something like that, or in a few hours. Isn't that correct? I'm allowing you time 
I'm, no, no, no. I'm, 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 I'm making a point. Um, I don't know today, and several people have asked me. Trinidad just did, did a deal with Capelli, and I don't know where I can buy a shirt. Do you know where you can buy a shirt, Kendall? No. In fact, it, ironically, someone I spoke with last night asked me, "How come my my you know I have an apparel brand, right? Trinidad and Tobago is not wearing my apparel brand." Right. When they saw that they were in Capelli. So I, I don't know. Yeah. And and the point is, Cataract, is that there's a lot of things that need to be fixed. Right? So the performance last night, it cannot be taken in isolation. Um, the win against um, St. Kitts and Nevis, there was no jumping up and down because at the end of the day, it was St. Kitts and Nevis. You have to beat the team that's in front of you. But last night was a better opposition. Um, and we didn't account for ourselves properly. And outside of what happens inside of the white lines of the field, there's a lot of things that need to be, to be fixed. A lot of things. Um, and you guys have been successful in getting some of those things taken care of in Jamaica. And, and for me, I would like our fan base our population to get involved in these conversations and, and, and stop hiding and try to hold the people that, uh, that, that is responsible for the football accountable so that they could bring a better product to the competition, right? There's no question that the product was not good enough. There's no question about it. So here's what I'd like to say again. And I don't want to come off of the football and get into administration. A game was played last night. When if I was grading the individual players of Jamaica, mm. there's no player that would get less than six out of ten or seven out of ten. None. If we were to, if from goalkeeper going forward, man them in the chat, ladies in the chat, and Gina Tapper, I'm asking you to type and tell us what perspective other Jamaican perspective you're speaking from. Tell me if there was any player on the Jamaican field, both substitute and starting 11, who would have gotten less than a 6 or 7 out of 10 on an objective football rating. No, Rick, Rick no, we're not a calling. Remember, so we're there, we're there St. Louis, so, and man is, man is in St. Louis as well, so we're roaming. But I'm asking, is there anybody who would have gotten less than six or seven, right? There are some players on the Jamaican team, I'm going to tell you this straight, who would have gotten 10 out of 10. And let me begin. Damara Grace's performance was the first closest thing I saw to a 10 out of 10. Kevin Lambert's performance. In, 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 in a 10 out of 10 in, in the Gold Cup, in the Gold Cup in world football, uh, what, in, what the game. You, in the in, game. In this game. You, you just talked about game. this particular game. Yes. I'm rating him in this game. On his birthday, he put two past you, bro. There is no... Listen, I'm when not, the I'm just was, asking for context. I'm just asking no, for context. I'm, I'm not just asking the rating of the game. Right. Demara Gray did not put a single foot wrong. Let, let me challenge somebody. Let me challenge somebody. Um, Let me challenge somebody. So, so we won yesterday, so we can't celebrate today. When we lose, people go on for days and days battering the coach and the players. But when we win, all of a sudden it's too hype, it's too bossy, man for respect. No, you don't get it both ways. So, so I, Kandra, I, hold on, hold on. I, somebody I just, just want to check. I just want to check. Hold I'm on, Zoom. somebody just had a comment. Wait, wait. Somebody just had a comment in the section here. Um, was asking, was suggesting that the Trinidad and Tobago coach comes off as arrogant. And they're asking me my views. And okay, so go, this, go, go ahead. So that, no, hold on. I, I, what I'm saying is this person, I, I, I'm, I don't have much context here, but I'm assuming that this person's um, perception is based on interviews that is done 
or that was done in Jamaica, the Jamaican games or whatever the case may be, right? This person probably doesn't know him personally. So based on that, they view him that way. So to the point that when the team lose, people go on for days and whatever, this person is probably feeling that the coach lacks some humility, right? In his conversations. That's why they probably feel that way. Would you agree with that? Your coach, yourself, Andre, not Kendall, you and your coach, even though you put a nice Queen's English around it, were hyping your own self off of the two match series that you had in Jamaica. No, no you hold, can't. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You, you cannot minute. include me in that. Hold a minute. Hold you, cannot, a minute. you can't provide any proof. Hold a minute. Uh, you were feeling yourself. No, 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 no. You cannot include me in that. What I did, what I did, all that all that I did is that you predicted a 7-0 when it didn't happen that way. I don't get hype over individual results. I, because I remember saying, I remember saying that Hal Grimson may win the long-term battle. You don't remember that part of the conversation? Yes, that's like saying, oh, we may lose some, win some. Let me get back to it. And I don't want to be... And, uh, and you're moving me off of the game. Your coach is arrogant. I eat <laughs> Angus steak. They're very good. But your coach, your Angus, was tough. Not digestible. He was talking about some handball, something, something handball that the VAR went and looked at and determined that it was not. Right? I am challenging anybody on this platform to tell me two mistakes that Damara Gray made. Two. When I said from sitting where I was sitting, I saw a player execute the coaches with the coach's instructions. And for more than one injury break, the coach called Damara and called Liam Bailey over and kept talking to them. Right? Um by the way, Triple E is correcting you. Oh, okay, okay. Andre wasn't hyping, <laughs> and, and and Angus Eve is a very humble brother who <laughs> thinks that Jamaica, you know, come on. Um, you interrupted my flow, and I'm gonna let Kendall come in. Um, I can't even remember what I said. There was no, there was Kendall, no, there was no handball in the game. There was no handball in the game, and don't don't encourage that conversation. I mean. Whatever, I don't know what he said about the handball, but there was not a handball. So if he, if he accused the ref of making the wrong decision, the ref made the decision, it was looked at, and watching it on television, the ball was not handled, right? And that's straight up. So in the motion, in real time, um, sometimes it's better. That's why you hear some of the top-level coaches say, um, I haven't had a chance to look at it. I didn't see it because they don't want to make acquisitions that is incorrect because there's a, there's a price for that as well. So if he did say that, if he, if he did say that, that was wrong. Um, I'm not so sure. Um, right, so, so Orlando Brown is saying that, that he did say that. And, and if he said that, there was not a handball. I, I can say that I saw that. There was not a handball. It looked, don't don't, it don't jump over the fact that he said, some person pointed out that he said it eight times in the interview. He also tried to say that it would have changed the course of the game, which is pretty much in line with what you were saying. Like, if we had moved some pieces around on the Titanic deck, it would have stopped you from sinking. Go ahead, Go ahead, Kendall. Go ahead. Go ahead. Let me come in here and talk some football because yeah, football. You, people are talking are looking for football talk. You're, you're you're rightfully highlighting Gray's performance, okay? So when we look at football, one of the things that worked well for Gray's performance was the ability in the way that the Jamaican team played to have him isolated a lot of times one we won against the wing back. Right? In football, if we just flip the other side and think about Aubrey on the other side with Trinidad and Tobago, nine out of ten times, 
he wasn't being able to be isolated because they found Jamaica defensively had a way to double team him and make it difficult for those one-on-one -on -one isolations. So when we talk about personnel and we talk about football, do you have a way to answer to what the team is doing defensively to minimize those isolations that Gray had in order for him to exploit what his strengths were? So Jamaica played in a way that highlighted his strengths and Trinidad and Tobago didn't. Can personnel and the way you deploy personnel and or your tactics account for those things to bring some semblance of balance to what is happening when there's an overload taking place? That, that's the football that we can talk about. Gray had a brilliant game. He, he didn't look any different than he looks in the EPL to me, okay? But I'm saying that if, if the team is organized in a way, knowing that that's his strengths, then you have to do some things differently to have to deal with that, whether it's denying the service getting to him in the isolation, right? Where, how are you dealing with the central midfield or the players that are providing the service to him? And or when he's receiving, do you reshuffle your personnel, have a player dropping back so you could double team? You have to be able to do those things, and those things didn't happen, so Gray had a field day. And there's, there's nothing... There's so, nothing so I want to ask Kendall, so what, uh, uh, as football, what would be your rating, player rating for... Demar Gray's performance. Well, all the players have high rating because of the no, result. No, Demar Gray, I'm asking, what would be your, and, and you would have known this and we do this all the time and see it all the time after every match players are rated. Out of 10, what would be your player rating? I'd probably rate him an eight, a 8. I'd probably rate him an 8. There were some times when he was not successful, but again, against the level of competition, maybe he could have done more. If he's matched up against an equally talented defender and he destroys him, then your rating goes higher. But when you're playing against somebody below the average, then your rating can't be as high. Not that he didn't perform and execute, but there's some times where Jones snuffed him, took the ball from him, won the ball from him, and won in those same one we won battles. So I rate him an eight. It, it, it is, it is, look, look, football is. Football is a team sport. It's not an individual um, game. It's not one. A lot of times we like, and I know it happens on our island, we like to blame one individual for an outcome and not look at the bigger picture, right? So, you know, Kendall is right. The, the coach got, the Jamaican coach got, he got it right. He got his formation right. He got his game plan right. And, and things worked out, okay? I think one could, one could suggest that, that, the Trinidad coach probably believed he got his wrong because he made some changes at halftime, which um, normally coaches don't do, right? Unless they believe that they absolutely have to change something. So those things are before us. And, you know, when you talk about what the game being able to go the other way, there was never really any indication um, after 20 minutes that the game could have gone in another direction, right? There was, there was really no indication about that. And, you know, um, Pim, the 470 here is saying that TNT did bad and we have to accept that. No, we don't have to accept that. We have to demand better. We have to demand better because it's a country that I believe has a tremendous amount of potential that needs to be tapped into. And if we don't fix all the things around the football, then the football in the region to start with would not be better than it was last night against the likes of Jamaica and the USA and the top teams in the region. Yeah. You completed? Yes, sir. So to say I'm dominating you. So I know that. <laughs> Jamaica dominated Trinidad, the reggae boys. So I'm not going to do that today. I'm allowing you to express yourself. So let me go again. I'm asking the person there, because some people are for Team Cataract, man, them. respect and bro, man, security, the whole like Team Cataract culture, them, rate, you know. 
Say little near say as them. Anyway, I saw you on television last night. Many times. I am the head of the ultras. That's what I do. I'm in the game, at the stadium, at every game. So, let me say this. I said I rated Damari Gray 10 out of 10. My, my good friends in the chat brought up the, 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 the statistical raters. Sofa score, 8.9. Up to index, 9.0. So how is my 10 out of 10 sort of like out of whack and cataract a madman and cataract you see? Add into that, that I am a, add into that, that my rating, I'm a fan of this team. Right, so there, might be, a, there might be a little emotion in your rating, a little bit of emotion, and that's okay. No, and I'm asking, but if we when talk player, about if we talk about it purely from a football perspective and, and we be logical about it, um, um, Kendall pointed out some moments that he didn't have success. I mean, everything didn't go right. Yes, he scored a goal, he had an assist. He was very good last night. He has been, he was very good last night, but a 10 out of 10 is, is, um, is, um, you would agree or you should agree that it have a little bit of emotion in it. So I'm going to, I'm going to say this again to some people. Pagan. You believe that if Trinidad had beaten Jamaica last night, Andre would have been talking as if somebody's knocking at my door. Yes, I'll be having the same conversation. I'll be having the same conversation with the same demeanor. <laughs> he's, a, he's, the, he's the ultimate Kendall, the ultimate Jamaican fan. I, no, but I, um, but um, what they have done, and, and this is what I am hoping, um, I, I don't, I'm not a social media fan. I had no intent, but these guys have done a really good job in this platform in holding the Jamaican Federation accountable. Um, some have even gone out and done work on their own. What we have is we have a lot of people that like to criticize and nobody is making the human investment. And we need to try somehow to get people on board. You know, you go to the, to the stadium on Sunday and, and there's a lot of people there and they're having a, a good time. They're having a party because, you know what I mean? Yes, that's, that's okay. That's okay. That's okay to have that. But what about before that to guarantee that we can have a, we can have a product that we could all enjoy and we can do it consistently? This is, this is three days out from Sunday and the conversation is different. Four days out from Sunday, right? Last, last night was three days and the conversation is different. So what I only have... So I only have another 10 minutes left. My ride is outside to take me to the airport, but he's giving me 10 minutes. Yes. Andre, some people remembered mm -hmm. how you acted when you won the game, but I'm sticking with this game. Damara Gray, I cannot point out. I don't know who watched it on television. Who, who remembers that? Who remembers that? Gilligan. Gilligan. What does I it say? I, I'm asking anybody. You took the other thing. You, I'm asking and anybody. If when you Jamaica can, lost to Trinidad and Jamaica, you was laughing at him and he said he will see you in the Gold Cup. In the Gold Cup. But you did. You, you made a prediction that Jamaica that didn't come true. Trinidad 7-0. to zero, Yep. And you were wrong. Yes. But, right. today, but last and night I was I didn't, right. make, I didn't make any prediction about the Trinidad game. No. Did I? But, right. Right. So, so it's two different conversations. You've got to give it context. Right? I, I have, I've never been I've never been that way on the platform, right? I'm a guest on the platform, right? No, so you're, you're, a you're a co-host. You're a co-host. I'm a like co-host, but I'm it, 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 you know. So what I'm saying to you um, is, I am hoping that the platform that I was afforded the opportunity to be a part of would catch on and trade out in the same way, and people would start to have some of the same conversations. So we could know where to buy football shirts. That we can have a team Maybe that we can be proud of, just like you are proud of your your team. Are we are we really talking about buying football shirts? <laughs> this is a post-match review. Kendall spoke about football. I respect his football in argument because he was correct. And you are correct, Kendall, that you play the defender who you're in front of. And maybe Demar Gray might not have been able to do that to Luke Shaw. Or maybe he might not have been able to do that to Roberta Carlos in his heyday, but he played who was in front of him and he played him like a fiddle. And I'm saying that from as far back as I can remember, that is one of the best performances I have seen from a reggae boy in a black, green and gold shirt. 
bar none coming back from Walter Boy Blacks, Nandilo. When Ian Good is when the man them stand up against Brazil with with um um Roque Jr. and Romario and Bebeto. This was as good a performance from Demar Regri as I've seen. Now, in my little time left, I would like to give credit to the other players that I saw. I went on Kevin Lambert. Kevin Lambert, and I saw it before, spoke to him after, and I told him, Regin, you have proved me wrong. You have stepped up several levels in a short space of time. And in this competition, you have demonstrated that you're able to understand the role that the coach has given you to play. I also want to highlight Deshaun Bernard, who persons were skeptical about, but he demonstrated last night why he has been at Manchester United and a Manchester United player up until, and he will remain a Manchester United player until the, 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 the 30th of June, right? But he formed a very good partnership with uh, Damien Lowe. And that was sort of a rock solid partnership in the center of defense. I think he brought something to the game that Mariapa didn't in that he's taller, he's a good header of the ball, but he reads the game well, able to make interceptions. And at least on two occasions, he carried the ball out of defense in a manner that like John Stones would do. What What is your opinion of Burke? I've, of I've, I've seen Burke. I've seen some comments of, I've ha I've had conversations with some people. Um, and what is your what is your your opinion on Burke? A uh, Corey Burke, he probably was the worst Jamaican player on the field. But he's that, what the, he's what he he was the worst Jamaican player on the field. It, is 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 that because right? he doesn't play in England? In the time he it no by anybody in the time who he came on, right? No. The combination of Corey Burke and Shamar Nicholson has never worked for Jamaica. Never worked for Jamaica. Theodore Whitmore tried it on more than one occasion in the last Gold Cup and yielded the same results. Goals don't flow when those two mm -hmm. players are in tandem for whatever reason. He went on the field, but I suspect his, his instructions were not to hurry defenders, but to try and add more goals to the goal difference. But Corey played like he would have played against America, which is to hustle the ball and try and run out the clock. Why do you think the coach so, likes him? Why do you think the coach seemed to like him? Have him God. Why why do you think what quality do you don't think know. do you think he has that the coach might like? He 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 presses. He presses, but the coach has his preference. He presses. But last night, I agreed with this. the people who were saying they didn't like the hold on. The people who were saying they questioned the coaches, they questioned the coaches' um, selections and his substitutions. They cannot say that today because last night he got the substitutions right. I'm going to pause. And the last, the last player I want to single out is. Andre Blake, the captain. I don't know if you saw that there was a there was a scuffle at the end. One of your TT lads was a bit naughty. But Andre Blake is focused. Laser focused on winning this Gold Cup and captaining this team for the Gold Cup. I want to take whatever little time I have left to say respect to Andre Blake. The man now laugh, the man now go left and now go right. Last night when I went to the team hotel in the, on the piano, I played some gospel song on the piano and everything. Andre Blake, again, we beat you when that uh, Netflix series come out. He seems a changed man, and I believe that you can lead this team to greatness. I want to big up Andre Blake. 
and I'm going to have to go down, but... Oh, hold gonna, on, I have a question for you. I have, a question, I have a question just, for you. Just talk. I can't take the question now. I have to go down and speak to the driver. No, I have a question for you before you leave. Before you leave. No, I'm not going to leave. I'm going to go down and come back on. So have, a, have, a, little talk, have a little talk with, with um, the people who want to hear you and Kendall. You can go ahead. I'll be back shortly. <laughs> <laughs> and I have a few more minutes as well. But yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I myself, I gotta mm -hmm. um, have some work to complete. But look, um, there's another game coming up, and um, you know, the the U.S. team is is just as good a team. I think it's a it's a strong team as well. If you were the coach, if you were the coach, um, what would you be? What would you be trying to accomplish for this game? How would you, you, you know the roster, you know, you, you saw the game, you know what took place, you know the qualities of the players. What would you attempt to accomplish and how? Um, this game's going to be no easier. The, uh, the one thing that I think is of still of good value is that you got three points so from advancing to the next round getting an a point is going to be helpful right so you got to think in terms of points mm -hmm. uh, again it is a young uh u.s team uh with lots of different kinds of players so you're not sure who you're going to see um, but I would focus on my team and trying to put my, my, my strongest personnel in terms of how we organize across the pitch from back to front and uh, going after a result that at least can give us one more point that would give us an opportunity to be in the mix going into the next round. So uh, you have to be sure that you don't concede and don't concede early in the game. So you have to chase the game. You don't want to chase against the U.S., obviously, um, and be very strategic in how you pick your moments um, on both sides of the ball. Um, players have to be prepared to do the work, um, you know, in terms in possession and out of possession. They have to be prepared to do the work and have a positive attitude going in. There's, there's points at stake and not to look at the U.S. as... Yes, another big opponent, but we got 11 guys on the field. Our mission and our focus is on looking to get points out of this game. You have to look to get points out of the game. So um, so from the comment section, Pim the 478 is asking, Andrew, how much do you think it was a poor strategy versus the individual quality of players of the TNT versus Jamaica? Um, I... I I do want to, to get into um, to, to what could be um, what could be considered bashing coaches and that kind of stuff, because I'm a coach right. myself, so I'll tell you from my perspective as a coach. As, as, as a coach myself, when I coach, I, I believe in what I do, and there's a lot of focus on match day on what I do. I don't I'll be aware of the opponent and what the opponent has to offer, but I don't change what, what I do, what I do much um, because we, we train every day and, and we are trained to behave a certain way. And, and to just, to just take what you do and, and, and throw it out the door. And I'm talking about just from perception. It looks like that like the, the, there was a, a formation change for one reason or the other. It, it may suggest to the players that you don't believe in what in, in what you are asking them to do. So knowing your opponent and being aware of, of your opponent's strengths um, is one thing, but changing your entire way of playing, your formation, everything, um, I'm not so sure that that, um, that helps. I think the individual quality of the players are good. There's some, some very um, good players in that squad. Um, I see from time to time people are willing to comment and blame individual players, but it's, it's not an individual game. You have Levi Garcia, who just won um, two 
trophies in Europe, in, in, in um, where he plays, you know, you have um, Jovin Jones who won the, the, um, the MLS on two occasions. You have young players in the team. You have Malik Khan who came on late, who was, who was here at, um, in the MLS two team in, 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 Minnesota. in, Europe, in Minnesota. Um, you have Fortune who just signed for, who's, who's with the MLS first team in Atlanta that has um, a lot of quality players in it. So every day of the week, he's training with, you know, the likes of, of Tiago Almada, who is a World Cup winner. Um, so, and you don't get into those spaces because you're average. You don't get into those spaces because somebody likes you, because football is an industry. It's about making money. It's, it's not about uh, like and don't like. So there's a lot of good quality um, in the Trinidad squad. Um, maybe they could have been better um, as, as a group and, and, and hence the result that, that, that um, existed last night. What do you take on that, Kendall, if you? Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I'd have to agree with you. I think it's more than just about individual players. Um, for me, one um, you know, the belief system is very important in, in, in productivity and success, right? You got to believe in what you're doing. And then human nature um, changes and adaptability is important, but you can't tamper with it too much. Okay. Right. So, um, so those things are important. Again, we, we, we're on the outside looking in. We have no yeah. real information on or right. why he's choosing to do what he's doing. Right. Earlier on, I mentioned that in a tournament, sometimes it happens. Um, you would see depending on the opponent, there may be some structural changes or personal changes. Um, injuries could impact that. Um, you know, when you get to the third game, there's something different that's happening. Mm -hmm. So some teams choose to rest players while not. So there's so many factors that are involved there. But I think as a product, as a whole, at times against, uh, I, I don't want to say against stronger opposition, but there are times there's to me in, in 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 my observation there's not enough of a consistent fluid way in which the team functions as a unit in its style pattern and approach to play on both sides of the ball doesn't always seem to be um cohesive again for whatever reasons i don't know that's just observational and i think that that's an area that that needs to be better going into the next game. Um, that is going to be important. That's okay. going to be important. There are moments last night where you could see defensively players are, are easily pulled out of position. They're disorganized, um, you know, in some areas of the field. So that's credit to the opponent who's doing what they need to do. But those okay. are things that I think can be fixed or need to be addressed in the flow of the game. You know, if, if a player is constantly being isolated, there's a reason why that's happening in a 1v1 situation, right? With the yeah. opponent, there's a reason why it's happening, mm -hmm. and you have to be able to address that in the flow of the game again, whether it's making adjustments in your formation and or personnel or how you approach those situations, uh, you you have to be able to do it, and I, I don't know that that always happens. Yeah, and I I am um, I have no to be clear, I have no inside information, <laughs> and and um, I'm just going off of of what we see. And you know, Stefan is asking, what do you think the strategy should be for TNT in the USA game? I again is it's difficult to to have an opinion. Uh, you know, we don't know what injuries alike we don't know what recovery is like we don't know there's a lot of things that we don't have that it makes it difficult to to have a a football conversation about this um but what i would say is um we played a high line last night it seems a high line if you look at bailey's goal i think in in particular as one of the goals we have a hard line high line and there was no pressure on the ball Okay, and those two together, there was about 
30 yards of space between the goalposts and our line. The ball was chipped in quite easily behind the line into the space, barely picked it up, had a lot of time um, to even consider if he was offside before he finished. As far as the next game goes, that, that can't happen because that's going to hurt us. Right? I think getting closer to people, making it difficult for people to play forward um, in a situation like that, you would want your back four, you know, to be jumping off to try to close that space because that space is very, very dangerous space in the game because now you have to turn and face your goal and chase. So for me, just based on what I saw in the game last night, those are things that if I am coaching my team, I would not like to see happen. If I'm playing a high line, you know, there must be pressure on the ball. There must be pressure on the ball. Um, and I think that's, that's, we, we don't know why that happened. We don't know why that happened. Um, but hopefully that is corrected for the next game. Yeah. I so think I'm, I'm back. I um, think text context and approach to the game will also dictate strategy. Like I said earlier, uh, for Trinidad and Tobago, at least earning a point is important. Winning the game is important when we think about getting to the next round. Okay, right. So that's important. So you have to come with a strategy that would allow you to do that. Okay, right. But when, when we take the U.S. and where they are positioned, what is what is their intent? Right. right. So maybe they're looking to score as many goals as they can. They want to top right. the group. So or they would take a more um, offensive-minded approach to the game. And if they do, what does that leave for Trinidad and Tobago? So right. th that that alone in itself would constitute where you build the frame for your strategy in the game. Uh, but again, to your point, when you go back and you look at the flaws and you look at where we got broken down last night against Jamaica, there's some things that have to be fixed and you got to be able to fix that, right? Are you going to be playing with a high line again and be vulnerable to space in behind? Or is your back four going to be better adjusted to deal with that space? All right, how do you, um, how do you improve your ability to have possession of the ball? Last night, we didn't have much possession of the ball, right? In the second half, there were some spurts. But possession of the ball is going to be important in the game against the U.S. So can you organize yourself to play in a way that you have a fair amount of possession? And then can you generate one, two, three? Last night we generated, what, one goal scoring opportunity? Can you generate more than one opportunity um, to score goals to win the game? And, and, and um, look... There's a process in between last night and then the game. How do you prepare all of the players, right, um, to be ready to play a role if they're called upon in the next game, right? That's important because when everything is good when you win and then when you lose, there's a lot of holes. There's a lot of things that people could point out as... Um, as reasons why you lost, everybody everybody surfaces with with criticism and 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 that sort of stuff. So, um, the coach, the team has a job on their hands, and and it's going to be a difficult one. It's not an easy one, but they have to give it a shot. And um, um, cut, um, Jamaica has a um, a game against um, you play St. Kitts and Nevis. Um, it's a game that Jamaica is expected to win. Get out the group. Um, probably quite easily. Um, but then, you know, it becomes a little more complex from there. So um, everybody have their, their challenges ahead of them and some in the moment is easier than, other, than others. And, and Trinidad is certainly a big one. And the type of leadership that is required to deal with, to prepare for this particular situation, um, you know, we just have to wait and see when the game come around. Okay, so I'm back. And I, I'm going to say this. My two Trinidad, my co-host, uh, Andre. Um, and I, I, I like that shirt, Cataract. This is the funeral outfit. Full black. Grim Reaper. <laughs> and <laughs> the guest, um, Kendall, you, you certainly dropped some nuggets of uh, footballing nuggets 
But I want some people to understand this. I am not Madden's man. I'm not a pastor. Yeah, but you are all Madden's man on Black Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on hold you are hold on. all Madden's man on Black Hawk. Yes. And, right. he's, he's and he, has, he has people in the comment section hold that on. listens to him. Hold on, hold on. And, he, and, he, okay, ahead, you and you don't want him to lose the super chats. So, so, <laughs> yeah, look, yeah. so, so let, let me go again. Let me say all this right. When a man says, <laughs> Cataract Mashing Up Man is Man Show, let the guest start. When I have been away from my laptop for 15 minutes, I'm going to burn you out, brother. Don't come try that. Don't try that. Myself and Andre, we have a nice chemistry. And I want people to understand this. Let me say clearly. I am no friend of Trinidadian football. The Soka Warriors are my Caribbean rivals. Manchester United TV doesn't go speaking nicely about Manchester City. So if you guys want to go to Carnival and looking for your room in a Trinidad, in an Andre mansion, I am not. These are my Caribbean rifles. And I will step on them every chance I get to let them understand that the reggae boys are the best team in CONCACAF, the best team in CFU, or will become the best team in CONCACAF. Will become. Will become. Oh, okay, okay. Great. I was, I was wondering. Will, great. I was... will become. I misspoke. But we are the best team in the Caribbean, the CFU. We are the kingpins. And man, for put respect for my team name and talk to me nice when you talk about my reggae boys. And I'm not in no shaky thing with no man. Like, you, you want to be all analytical. I'm an ultra brother. I stand there. I go and myself and 300 ultras stood up to Sam's army, 36,000 of them in Chicago. I didn't see enough man where I run up their mouth. Big up Neo Sovereign. Big up. I didn't hear you singing Three Little Birds. I didn't hear you singing Redemption Song. I didn't hear you singing One Love in the stadium. We were. So I have the opportunity, thanks to Manning's man, to express myself. I am never derogatory. I'm not cost a bad word. As I am, I am not a clone of Manning's man. Manning's man flies off the handle all the time. But I am keeping it calm. I am not a calm brother. And I will say this again, Andre and, and Kendall, with respect. Whenever my side doesn't do as expected, there are man in the chat that beat up on the tape. And the minute that we win, I can't celebrate 24 hours later. I can't sit in the moment and, and, and glorify my side and give them the flowers. One must say, mad. People, I'm going to say this. When you're at the stadium, there are things that you see that you do not see on camera. Right? Likewise, when you're in the stadium, there are things that happen quickly that you can't see everything. Right? In the stadium, I'm telling you, there is a new level of camaraderie. There's a new chemistry amongst the players. There's love amongst man and man and them bread, man and man. And it's right in the sight. I want to give credit to Omar Stennett, OC Manning's man, OC Pastor Six, because things are happening right with the management of this squad, along with Mr. Roy Simpson, who has stepped up his game. So it's not only the players on the field who have stepped up, the management process around the team has stepped up. But that's the point, that's the point, that's the point that I've been trying to make to you. Right? That's the point I was trying to make. And now you're coming full circle, and I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Right. And um, but I want to say to you, no, but I'm not, I'm not talking on, about Trinidad and Tobago. Right, no, I'm no, no. I understand you about the so but, so, but you are now an example for us. You are now an example for us. But there are some there are some Jamaican fans who may not have been in the stadium because they could not be there for one reason or the other. Right? And um, it doesn't make them less 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 of a fan of the no. national team. No, I didn't say it makes them less of a fan. So be a, be a little, be no, a little no, polite. No, 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 and I'm not gonna sorry. I did not say it makes them less of a fan. I said there are things that happen in the stadium uh, that fans who are in the stadium will see 
that you will not see on television. I also said that the fans who are watching the televised broadcast will see things that we may miss in the stadium because we are watching it in real time. I was not making anybody derogatory or anything like that. And I'm saying that what we saw in the stadium is a love and camaraderie amongst brethren and brethren that augurs well for our national team. We have spoken at ad nauseum about a divide between English born and Jamaican born and how that derailed our World Cup process. And I'm saying, I don't see that in this competition. Look, look, we Warrior, just, Warrior we, 777 has a question for you. Okay. How, how you can work? <laughs> I'm talking football. Yeah. And I want to get back to the last bits of nuggets of football. And Sean Ellis, I think you joined late, Bridgin. Yeah, we did a gloat for the first 10 minutes because I might write that. But we discussed, the Trinidadians discussed the breakdown in their in their game. We, I discussed the the performances of the various players who stood out for me. So we analyzed the game. But I'm not sure what is there to analyze about the game when one team annihilated the other team. They were not at the races. If they want to come and talk about, the, the coach is talking about the handball that would have changed the course of the game. A handball, a handball. That VAR, the ref went around, Looked at the monitor. I talk, we agreed that there was no handball, Cataract. <laughs> Allow me, please. We Allow agreed me. there was no handball. Allow me, please. <laughs> I allowed you and Kendall. Allow me, please. I only right, have a few minutes ahead. left. I'm saying your coach in his press conference kept referring to the handball and said that it would have changed the course of the game. The only course it would have changed is it would have get a bigger beating because it would get more serious. I also believe that Coach Hal Williamson got his tactics spot on in this game. I believe what we saw is a little different from Tapper, who would be on the sideline like this. Coach Hal Williamson calls players over during breaks and discusses the game. I don't know what's being said, but you can see that he's constantly issuing instructions to adapt to the game as it's going. The two people who he spoke to the most, Damara Gray and Leon Bailey. Remember to hit the like button. And I think he wants that combination to work in tandem. Right? So it was a, it was a, it was an excellent performance. And and I I want to lord my team. I'm going to big them up. I'm going to go crazy. I love it. We love the vibes of the NI Stadium, but I have two questions for you. I did tell people there were going to be two Trinidadian fans in the stadium, and you were not in the stadium. They, no, meaning the Trinidadian fans didn't turn out for this game, right? Jamaicans were there, we were represented. And I think Trinidad has to, you, you spoke about the administration, but I think on the fan side, you guys have to get organized so that you can come and rally behind your team. Right, and that's part of that's part of the conversation that we were trying to have because you you have you left Jamaica and it's it's costing you to spend the next how many weeks in America mm -hmm. um, so that you can support your team now because you believe that there's a product there that you will be entertained and you was you had your 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 cap twisted sideways last night and. <laughs> And you had your yellow shirt on and you were enjoying yourself. Um, yeah. And part of the conversation is to have a product that people could support. Yes, right? that is, that is true. Have a product that people could support. It, it is very costly to fly around to go support a team. It's very, very costly. Yeah, but but that's, that, that's not about it. That's, that's a sacrifice you make. What I'm yeah, saying right, is that's a sacrifice you I, make want to, I want to big up to the other ultras. Let me tell you. They were, and I, I want to speak a little bit about the fan part. Right. But hold on, hold on. Before hold you on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Before you go to the fan part, Let me... we're talking about the fans now. We're talking about the lack of Trinidad fans in the stadium, and you have pointed out that you have to have a product mm -hmm. that will garner support, and you are correct. I want to let the people understand what was who were in the stadium last night. There were Jamaican fans 
from Belgium and Germany who were in that stadium last night. Man who had flown in from Belgium and Germany to support the team. There were about a dozen, I counted, West Ham fans, including about three or four who flew from London to come and support the reggae boys. There were about three or four Everton fans who were there. Now, what that says to me is that Jamaica has be the footballing team with the injection of these players and the introduction of these players, congrats to um, Senor Halgrimson, has garnered international notoriety and international support. There were people who came there, fresh God, love my brother, because when we didn't have at Amanata for 20 minutes, we never there. There were fans that came specifically to support Mikhail Antonio in his international journey. Big up the IFC, the Intercity Firm, ICF. Big up the Hammers, forever blowing bubbles. And they were there. And I think that when you, what, what Trinidad can look at is when you bring these high quality players from the EPL, you also bring a level of uh, upliftment to your program. And that's what you can learn from us. I want to commend those fans who were not Jamaican. They were there to support their players who were representing Jamaica. Over to you, Andre. <laughs> Look, um, I would tell you, Katarak, um, football is a very heartless sport. And um, you, may be, you may be right to enjoy the moment because the emotions, we see it in football stadiums all the time when... Um, you know, a goal is scored and there's a lot of excitement because your team just scored a goal and then seconds later, you could be unhappy because the opponent scored a goal. Um, so you're right. I think you're right to enjoy the moment um, because, you know, it's been a heartbreak in football is always around the corner. Heartbreaking football is always around the corner. Um, Trinidad and Tobago have a lot, to, a lot of work to do in the football. A lot, a lot of work to do. And the quicker that they get going, um, I think there's a lot of young people involved in football that is trying to make a living off, out of football that has ambition. And that ambition needs to be matched um, from an administrative perspective so that the players could have a, a platform that they can continue to grow in the game and go and represent the, the country well. I think last night was um, was not what I think the fans would want, but not what people would expect. It's not where Trinidad should be. And um, it needs to improve. It's just, it's just that simple. It needs to improve. And um, they should be watching at what there's a rivalry between Trinidad and Tobago and Jamaica, and they should be watching what Jamaica has done and really be trying to catch up at the moment, really trying to catch up. Sometimes you hear excuses as to why, you know, and even criticism of what's been done, but Jamaica is heading in the right direction. I've said that from the beginning. That's what attracted me um, to these conversations and um, my message to Trinidad is to um, to Trinidad and Tobago is that something needs to be done. A lot needs to be done with a mat as a matter of urgency to improve the environment, to improve uh, the opportunity for the young men, from young men and young women for the country to represent the country. Yeah, yeah. Kendall, Kendall had to go, um, and we said that about ten minutes ago. Um, Cataract. Kadrak, you there? Guys, and I, I should have I should have been gone about 20 minutes ago. Um, so we tried to, to analyze the game. As you can see, it was a little bit 
um, difficult to, to take the conversation in that direction because um, um, Cataract was enjoying enjoying the victory and you can't you can't hold that against him he's um he's there he's supporting his team and he's enjoying himself um but we'll be back on hopefully um to try to get a more in-depth look i want to i want to look at the game again i think there's some details that we could learn from it um i don't think it's all um it's all gloom and doom i think it's um I think it's a bad performance and and they have to rebound. You know, football just recently, your last game, your game against the United States, Leon Bailey missed a penalty and everybody was up in arms and they talked for a few days. And I think it responds to it was was, you know, it's not the first difficult um moment in his life. And if he if he allowed those moments to keep him down, then he would never be where he had, where he is today, something to that effect. So um, it's um, Trinidad need to get up. They need to just, you know, to recover and get ready to be competitive in the next game and, and, and see if they can change the luck and still try to, to qualify for the next game. Um, the coach needs to make everybody feel important um, as they're part of his plans and, and get everybody in the right frame of mind. If, if they start pointing fingers, then that becomes a little bit more difficult to achieve. And again, I have no information to suggest that that, that is going on, but football is a very funny game. It's an emotional game. And, and, and when you lose a game, especially at this level with, you know, the entire region watching, if not people from other parts of the world, um, people, get, people get a little bit, um, you know, emotional intelligence sometimes does not prevail. Um, so let's let's hope that that they can get it together and 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 get ready for the game on on Sunday. Katrak, you heading to the airport still, or you change your mind? No, yeah, I, I I head into the airport. Um, or you flying I'm, private I'm private jet or what? You flying yes. private? Yes, sir, I am. Okay. <laughs> so I'm there you up. go. <laughs> no, man, but but it's not a hype thing. So let me say this: I think I've allowed Andre to speak. I think I allowed Kendall. Um, what did you feel that you have got the chance to say everything you need to say? And I'm going to say this. <laughs> I I say we have. Say we have to say. Um, Kronky, yes, we're going to try to look at the game right. at some um at some point in time. Just let me know. I think we text back and forth the idea. So, yeah, man. So I, I, I'll, I'll make my my final wrap of points. Um, wonderful performance by Jamaica. Coach got his statics right. Damari Gray's performance was 10 out of 10. Kevin Lambert, 8 out of 10, stepped up. Uh, Deshaun Bernard and, and, and Damian Lowe, I would give them a 7.5 to 8 out of 10. Probably 8 for Damian Lowe, 7.5 for Deshaun Bernard. Javain Brown is playing like a man who knows that his position is competition and that uh, Dexter Lembekisi is competition for him. So he played brilliantly. Um, he didn't go forward as much, and his crossing would be why I would say he's seven. Dexter Mbekisi showed his versatility by being able to come and play the left-back role um, because Amari Beth had not recovered enough to come on the, uh, come on the pitch, right? Um, so kudos to, to, to Javain Brown, kudos to Dexter Lambekisi, Um they did the job that they went out there. Um, brother, yo, no man not tell me if I do. Uno can't program me. Uh, who else <laughs> have I left out? Um, <laughs> Leon Bailey um Wait. did more of what people wanted to see which is Flavor Max. Flavor Max is hold trying on, to hold hold on, hold on. let me just get no ah. you're cutting me fresh god where are you talking about andre cutting me off yeah <laughs> no andre let me finish um leon bailey had an improved performance in this game in terms of trying to work cohesively with his front line um could not be um accused of 
over dribbling or holding up the ball. Yes, he did a couple of times, but he's getting there. He got the goal that he desperately needs. So I hope that that is able to calm him down and now we can just focus on building. Um, and I want to save. So Bobby Reed did the job that he was supposed to do. I can't add nothing to that. His performance was to me about a six and a half, but he did the job that he was supposed to do. I want to say, Mikhail Antonio. The general say he's playing everybody into the game. And when he is, so let me tell you what he says. When he is ready, he is going to start scoring the goals. But it was more important to him that his partners in attack got on the sheet, brought the ducks, and so he was playing a role and he got an assist on the, on the Mary Gray's goal. Um, and he says he will be ready. Fans, he has told Cataract, he will be ready when the time is there to score the goals that we need to win the Gold Cup. And that's all he's focused on. But he wants to get his striking, attacking partners firing on all cylinders. Um, big up my team. I'm proud of you. Um, big up my coach. I'm proud of you. The management staff, Roy Simpson, you've stepped up your game. Andre Blake, uh, Andre Blake, um, Manning's man. It, it shows that help was needed. And when you reach out and get good help, you get good results. The players are comfortable. The players are happy. There's a barber. The, the food good. Rice and peas. And it, everything is clicking. And when everything is clicking on and off the pitch, that gives you the best chance of achieving your objective. I would like my team to win the Gold Cup. If you're not talking about winning, I better you not say nothing about my side. Reggae boys, safe journey to uh, uh, California, Santa Clara. Um, Amari Bell, I hope you recover from that 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 injury not, but we know you've been going and going for the EPL. Um, and I hope you'll be ready to come back for the for the um knockout phase. That the coach is gonna rest him. Um, my team, I wanna say this. Deal with deal with deal with send kids like our oh, country people deal with go teeth. Beat them, beat them. Rack up the numbers on them because goal difference is going to determine this group and we need to put more in. Uh, Owen, Owen, you said more quality to join. Let me tell you what I, what I know and tell you this. Leon Bailey, I work on a player for Aston Villa. Demari Gray, I work on two players to convince them, all to them own mouth. The recruitment is on. But what I'm saying, what we have now, I am confident if the team plays the instruction, we can lift this goal cup. We can reach the finals and then it's anybody's game. I wish my team well. You know what I mean? Jobless. Risk the real fandom. Risk everybody, the wagonists, everybody. We should know well. Make we all just focus on winning this Gold Cup, lifting silverware. Coach Alvinson, as you said, you've been unbeaten unbeat, in competitive matches. Carry that through to the finals. The man that moved to California on a rollout. Santa Clara Stadium. Different juggling. You know what I mean? No, we can no longer get Ivan Tony, uh, Chelsea Blue. Um, we can no longer... No, no, oh, no, no, not Jacob Ramsey. No, no, no. Um, he said uh, Jacob Ramsey is well within the English national setup. And so, yeah. Well, big things are coming. But this team now, right now, right yes, sir. I love it. <laughs> Different juggling. That's right, you're happy. I'm um, happy. I'm happy, I'm I'm happy as a lark. Before we go, um, we, we Cardo Baggio, Andre, it's a process. The aim is the World Cup 2026. Trinidadians just have to be patient. The squad has potential. 
I agree, agree with you. Um, what we haven't seen is a conversation about, we haven't seen anything. I haven't seen anything, and I, I, um, we didn't listen. I haven't seen anything that suggests that 2026 is a priority. Um, but let's hope that, that that's something, and, and no one individual could get us to 2026. We need a whole group. Kacha, I tell you that um, I have a picture of, you know, yesterday there's a, this past week, there's um, women's football, big national tournament here in the U.S. And, um, and it just includes team from the USA. And, you know, other countries have scouts, like Mexico have scouts all over the tournament looking for players to represent the country. And you guys have done a good job with that. And um, these are things that we hope um, uh, the Trinidad and Tobago Federation or the setup with 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 put in place to see how we can find some of the best players, anybody that's that's good enough or or better than what we have locally that can come and help the country compete. So, with that said, Cataract, when you get have this to the airport. You when fly into this time. part of the program, and let me say this. So let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Are, well, you flying, are you flying with the team? No, I don't fly with the team. Are you sure? Because you tell I'm me. A, I'm an ultra. Okay. So how are you flying? Mm -hmm. What airline are you flying with today? You just answered it, son. What airline are you flying with today? G7. G7. All right. G7 jet. All right, you, just, you, asked, you asked the question. You answered the question before. I'm flying privately. Well, I you didn't because, answer before. because and it's not a hype because the commercial airlines are booked. Yeah. Because this is this is the July fourth weekend. Yeah, it's a very tough time to travel. You know what I mean? It's a very tough time to travel. Um, but I want to say this, bro. I bought eight cycle bunny shirts because I intend to wear them one right up to the finals. Eight. I hope one, Kataram, that you are not disappointed. No, I hope you're not yes. disappointed at any step of the, at any step of the way. I've seen some very good teams in the Gold Cup so far. Yes, some yes. Very good, some very good teams in the Gold Cup. Some good performances. Yes. So There's some so, very good teams in the Gold Cup. So have uh, I would I like you. Know. I'd like you to take a dose of humility, enjoy the win, and just take it one game at a time. There's some very good teams in the Gold Cup, starting with Jamaica. Yes, yes, including Jamaica. Start one game at a time, though. But one game at a time. One game at a time. Yeah, we're taking no, one game at a time. Psycho bunny and a mad rabbit. <laughs> Middle rear mad rabbit. When we get to this point in the program, yeah. thank you all for listening to the rantings of an ultra and <laughs> a more sober minded man with a beat bad mind out of him. <laughs> beat. Right? Um, <laughs> Trinidad, I, I, if, if you can beat the United States and qualify, more power to you. You understand? Hey, there's, there's plenty of football to play again. I would be booking tickets back to Port of Spain, Piaco. Hey, there, but, there's plenty of football to play again. Don't worry. Good. Uh, lastly, congratulations to the under 23. 1 1 draw with Honduras down there. Hopefully, we get a chance to speak about that game. But Brandon Cover um, and the massive Krista Day Daly and the massive Anthony Bennett. And the massive um, Rami and Blake and the crew on the big up and self in Central America. We are over and, and out. out. <laughs> Later, Catra.